Hello friends hello young learners how are you all i hope you all remember the story about the famous einstein that we read in our part 1 in part 2 i once again welcome you to enjoy and to know more about einstein if you remember my dear children in our part 1 we had read paragraph number 1 to 15 in which we just had a journey right from einstein's childhood days what his mother thought about him what his headmaster thought about him what his friends thought about him he was not at all taken to be a genius he was even his mother said he's a freak headmaster said that he does not he will never get success in his life and as he grew up he proved everybody wrong and you will find that he even developed an interest in violin and it became his passion which he continued throughout his life we also got to know about his school days he was never interested in any other subject other than science and mathematics especially he was interested in physics if you remember i had i had told you that once he had a lot of discussion and argument with his history teacher he never liked to to learn and mug up the dates and events rather he was interested more in knowing what was the cause of that event so this was the peculiarity or you can say so unique about einstein that he always wanted a reason behind the events we also got to know about his meeting with his friend milva and how his mother disapproved their marriage but later on they got married and but the marriage did not uh, did not work out properly he they, they were not very successful in their married life and they got divorced and after that he got married to his cousin elsa and we also got to know about uh, the famous equation that einstein had given this is about his uh, famous equation e is equal to mc square now the best thing about einstein was that he always wanted to give a new definition to time space and he gave a new dimension to these two terms and he gave the world understood what really time and space means he he talked about relativity he talked about he gave a very f- a wonderful example from your which is given in your textbook also what relativity really means he said that if you are spending time waiting for somebody the time seems to be so long but when you are spending time with your friend with your best friend or with your girlfriend perhaps that time is very short for you so time and space is all relative right and we also got to know about the uh, uh, about his uh, views on r- different uh, inventions and scientific inventions and discoveries now in today's session in this part we will be knowing what his opinion was about the scientific inventions was it wa- did he really advocate for uh these inventions meant to be uh, taken for your uh, destruction or he wanted the it is to be it is to give something productive to this world to do something new and make this world grow in a better way so here we will get to know uh, his opinion about uh, the these scientific inventions and what he told about what he wrote to uh, the scientific uh, to the uh, uh, franklin d roosevelt american president of th- during that time he wrote a letter on 2nd august 1939 this also you read in uh, in paragraph 15 so after recollecting all these things that you have read from paragraph 1 to 15 let us move on to paragraph 16 and here it goes einstein was deeply shaken by the extent of the destruction he was he was disturbed very much disturbed this time he wrote a public missive this means a letter especially long and official letter to the united nations and here the picture shows when he is addressing that in it he proposed the formation of the world government 
unlike the unlike the letter to roosevelt this one made no impact but over the next decade einstein got to ever more involved in politics agitating for an end to the arms build up and using his popularity to campaign for peace and democracy this is the another shade of his personality he being such a great genius he being such a great scientist he also was thinking about humanity he was also thinking about how to bring peace and democracy in this world and he wanted that his studies his research his findings his innovations his inventions should all should do something good to the mankind rather than destructing it when einstein died in 1955 at the age of 76 he was celebrated as a visionary and world citizen as much as scientific genius no doubt he was a scientific genius but more than that he was also named as the world citizen because his concern for the human beings his concern for the world the citizens of the world for the whole mankind so this is what it tells us that it is not important what we are inventing what we are what scientific developments what scientific inventions we are doing we should always think about what is the outcome of it if it is used whether it will be used for a better for betterment of the human beings or it is going to bring some kind of destruction i think being genius being scientist and genius and having that uh, thinking about that concern for the human beings is a great quality of this great scientist a great human man now here we get to know about scient- about einstein you see he is uh, from his right from his childhood days it's not that he was born genius he everybody had a different notion about this child but how he proved himself in the later years in the uh, when he grew as a scientist when he proved himself to the world as a scientist and he gave so much to this world that if you start making list of what einstein einstein had given to this world perhaps the list would be endless so we have to see if there are so many things that this world does not know about einstein we don't know about einstein we just know that he had uh, this given so many theories to this uh, to this world but it is if we want to know about einstein more then you can even have a reading of these books that i have recommended you can read more about einstein to know more about einstein you can have a look and some of the pictures that i have taken they are from these books albert einstein it's a biography then the unknown einstein by bal fondke and this is again albert einstein and uh his mind right so here these are the three books that would definitely uh bring you close to uh, the life of einstein and you can have a joyful reading knowing the scientist this great mind now here we come to the textual questions this is an interesting one see we read the whole uh, story about einstein uh, and there was a particular sequence right we we got to know that every paragraph was talking about uh, some particular aspect of einstein right so here what has happened is that uh, some of the points are given to you but they are all jumbled up they are all mixed so what you need to do is you have to read the comment given you have to read what is the heading for each paragraph and you have to see which paragraph talks about this so you should be ready with your textbook first one is done for you einstein's equation this is mentioned in paragraph 9 now my dear children you have to 
see which paragraph will be talking about einstein meets his future wife try to find out will have you need to refer to your text uh, to to the text go to the concerned paragraph next is the making of a violinist you have seen uh, you have read it also in the text that he learned right from his very early age he started learning violin because his mother wanted him to learn violin and this passion he continued throughout his life i had given you a picture also so you can just quickly refer to the text and see which one you solve it then we'll have a match with your answer with the correct answers right but first you try it on your own then meliva and einstein's mother something is mentioned about einstein's mother and meliva because einstein's mother was not in favor of meliva and einstein getting married because she felt that her intellectual does not match with this and she's not that intelligent and she, somehow she did not uh, have a very good opinion about her uh, so does it have you got have you been able to trace where is it i think it is not difficult a letter that launched the arms race yes it is mentioning about the letter you have to refer to that paragraph where the mention about the letter is given then it does desk drawer full of ideas he talks about the patent yes i think you have got it then marriage and divorce he got married and then he got divorced he got married to meleva and after a few years he got divorced so here is the answer i i think first one is paragraph 9 the second one is paragraph 7 paragraph 3 then you have paragraph 10 fifth one a letter that launched the arms race you have found in paragraph 15 then you have paragraph 8 talking about desk drawer full of ideas and paragraph 11 talks about his marriage and divorce i think all of you have got it correct now another interesting question here for you from your text who had these opinion about einstein other than einstein we also get to know about his headmaster we get to know about his friends we get to know about his teachers we get to know about his mother what they had to say about einstein so here we have three statements you have to see first you try it on your own he was boring who said this who believed that he was boring i think his friends yes so his playmates they thought that he's boring and they never were very happy with him and they used to call him brother boring right he was stupid and would never succeed in life somebody had given this statement about this child when he was a child and he was into his school he somebody had said this to his father yes it was his master who said this he was a freak i think in the very first paragraph you get to know that mother used to believe that he was freak because he was very unusual kind of person very unusual behavior right some unusual behavior we also got to know that he did not speak uh, at an early age his head was very big and he preferred not to talk he started talking after 2 and a half right now question number 3 explain what is the what the reason for the following are first one einstein leaving the school at munich for good what do you think what was the reason why did he want to leave was we he very comfortable there i think no he hated regimentation i have given you some hints you note down the hints and you frame sentence and write it right he hated regimentation and he had often clashes with the teachers because teachers had a different concept different uh, uh, belief and he had just contradictory uh, belief of his studies right he was but as i if you remember i had mentioned that he was very happy with his science and mathematics teacher 
Next is Einstein wanting to study in Switzerland rather than in Munich. Why is it so? Again, you have a hint here. It was more liberal than Munich. Yes, it was less strict. Then third one, Einstein seeing in Mileva an ally. Why do you think he felt that, yes, she could be a good companion, a good partner, a good friend? Why is it so? Because she was against those whom he did not like. What do these tell you about Einstein? Now, whatever we said, here you have to write. Whatever we have discussed so far about Einstein, you have to write about him. Right? That what kind of things he liked, what kind of people he liked and what was his belief regarding studies and why he was a good, why he thought Mileva was a good friend of. All these things you have to just club and write about him. I think this you must try on your own. Now we'll move on to the next. Why did Einstein call his desk drawer at the patent office? Why? Now here I have given you not the hint. A hint is the paragraph. You locate the paragraph. In paragraph 8 you will get what exactly we are looking for. He said that this is why did Einstein call his desk drawer at the patent? What did he say and why? What, what did he say? He said that it was a Bureau of Theoretical Physics. This is given in paragraph 8. He called this. I am giving you the hint. But now you tell me why did he say so. There was a reason. You look for the reason in the in this paragraph. I am helping you mentioning the paragraph so that it becomes easier for you to locate the answer. Next is why did Einstein write a letter to Franklin Roosevelt? You go to paragraph 14. Here you will find that why does he write a letter to this because he was, he wrote a letter even in paragraph 14 and 15 also you will get because he was not in favor of the, uh, the kind of uh, development that was going to take. Something related to Nazis is given, locate that and write it. Paragraph 14, you can get something in paragraph 15 also, but mainly it is given in paragraph 14. Now you have another question. How did Einstein react to the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki? It is given in paragraph 16. Go to paragraph 16. Yes, here paragraphs are very, each paragraph is talking about a, diff, a particular uh, point and a particular idea and you have to see that each and every paragraph when talking about a particular idea has a relevance because these questions are framed keeping each paragraph in mind. So here you get paragraph 16 which again talks about his reaction to the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Was, was he advocating that or was he uh, uh, appreciating that? I think the answer is known to you because after reading the uh, story you get to know that he was very very upset with this and the reason is that he never wanted that such uh, uh, scientific developments scientific inventions should cause any kind of destruction to the human life next is why does the world remember Einstein as a world citizen Again, you have paragraph number 16 here. Why do you think he is remembered as the uh, world citizen? Because he has, he did not think only about uh, his inventions. Rather, he was thinking about the welfare, about peace, about how to bring peace and harmony in the entire world and how his developments will help this world to grow how his scientific inventions will help man to have a better life and to have a better understanding of, si of time and space rather than inventing something which would cause destruction or which would bring an end to this human beings or to the mankind. So we have to see that these were certain uh, aspects about uh, different qualities of Einstein which really made him being called a world citizen. 
Now another interesting exercise from your textbook. Now we have this question where uh, some facts are given about Einstein's life. You have to arrange them in particular order. Which one should come first? Like you have to talk about his birth, then about his education, then about his uh, research, then about his uh, his education. So all when and the last one would be when he died, right? So here you have to uh, arrange them in particular order. Uh, it is it cannot be done that quickly. But I have provided the answers to you. You can just have a look and. Uh, you can see, like first one is Einstein is born in, Germ in the German city of Ulm. Then you have Einstein attends a high school in Munich. So this is how you have to arrange. Go one by one in particular sequence and you will get. So order is F, D, E, J, G, K, A, I, B, L, C, H. So this is the order. You can have a look and write it. You try it out, match it with the answer that is given. Next, you have another question where we are discussing the language part. Here you have some verbs given in italics. You have to find out the meanings of these from the, from the three meanings that are given in the bracket. You have to choose the correct one. A few years later, the marriage faltered. You please note the meanings that were given while we were reading. If you have noted down, you can easily do these questions. Einstein was constantly at odds with people at the university. Then you have the newspaper proclaimed his work as a scientific revolution. Einstein got ever more involved in politics, agitating for an end to the arms buildup. At the age of 15, Einstein felt so stifled that he left the school for good. So here you have some words given, explanation or meanings given. You have to match with them. You have to find out which one is the correct. Five years later, the discovery of nuclear fission in Berlin had American physicists in an uproar. Again, this was discussed while you were uh, being uh, discussed the story i had given you the meanings science wasn't the only thing that appealed to this dashing young man with walrus mustache so here again you have the meaning see which one now you have another one uh, here about uh, another part of language we will be discussing what participle phrase is you see, these two sentences are given from your text. Einstein became a gifted amateur violinist. He maintained this skill throughout his life. Here, maintained, these are two different sentences. And in the second sentence, you have verb maintained. Now, in the second sentence, you see how we have ch changed. We have joined these two sentences by changing something with this verb. You see, Einstein became a gifted amateur violinist maintaining the skill throughout his life so the verb maintain has been changed to maintaining and this whole phrase is called as the participle phrase we have used v2 second form of the verb maintain in sentence one and this maintaining the skill throughout this life is participle phrase now what is participle phrase that you have to see here what is a participle phrase? It is an adjective phrase headed by a participle and it qualifies what a qualifies a noun. So here we have in sentence 2, maintaining is participle and the phrase maintaining this skill throughout is the participle phrase. His life is participle phrase, uh, throughout his life is participle phrase which is qualifying or modifying the noun Einstein. So it's simple way of understanding what a participle phrase is now it will become very easy for you you see i have uh, highlighted some verbs in each sentence now each part has got each bit has got two sentences first one and the second second one is given in the bracket you see in the second sentence or you may find in one of the sentences you'll find one verb is highlighted you have to use a participle form in this how will you be using use the participle form like they worked round the clock. So how will you change it? 
worked will be changed to working working round the clock the fire five firefighters finally put out the fire here ing is not mentioning about the uh, it is not in simple present tense uh, present continuous or past continuous here it is we are using it in a participle form uh next one is she watched the sunset above the mountain she noticed the colors blending softly again these two sentences you have to use the participle form of all one point here i would mention go to the para, uh, sentence number 4 here you have second sentence i had taken now what is had had is a have form now what is have ing or participle form of have having right so you will not be bothered about taken here you will see what is the have form so had will change into having having taken the wrong train i found myself in bangalore instead of banaras right so th this is not very difficult you just tried another one which is uh, a bit different you see uh, sentence number 6 the stone steps dash it needed to be replaced they were worn down so here we will see were were worn down now worn down so were is a be form so you will be using a participle form of be that is being worn down right so it becomes simple so use see which is the highlighted verb and using that highlighted verb you have to use the participle of that right so it becomes very simple now these are some of the interesting photographs taken from those three books you can just have a look einstein's brain then einstein's fountain near town hall in ulm then there is a sculpture where his famous uh, equation is written then you can see einstein using enjoying his cycling ride and to end this session we'll just read a very famous quotation by einstein that he says we cannot solve our problem without with the same thinking we used when we created them so we have to see that how the things change with the time right so with this we come to the end thank you